way, but a great point. Yes. <laughs> I want to get back to you again because I get off track so much. People lose their minds. So you were a blackjack and craps. You were a degenerate. Like, I would literally, I mean, I, I, I talk about it all the time. I had this hot girlfriend that lived in Tahoe, really good mountain biker, just perfect, <laughs> perfect girl. And I would no, rather, like, she was fit. That was, she was on her, that was on her profile on yeah. J-Date. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I'm hot and I'm a mountain biker and you just went, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. Well, she was, she was acting my secretary and that's how it matter. It's nice that you yeah. date a mountain biker in yeah. Vegas where it's yeah. completely flat. Yeah. Tahoe, we even moved to Tahoe. Oh, Tahoe, Couldn't you did Vegas. I apologize. Tahoe, Vegas was too much for me. Moved to Tahoe, great little town. And... I just, I, I couldn't handle it. Got in a lot of trouble. Owed a bookie a bunch of money. And I ran, ran out of $40,000? Yeah, forty grand. And how much were you making a year? I was making you... about twenty-eight. So two years, yeah. three years salary yeah. after taxes yeah, is what you owe yeah. this guy. Yeah, about. And, and he... I was only there four months. Wow, you ran it up that quick? I mean, yeah, it was, it was an awesome four months, man. Best money I ever spent. I mean, it was awesome. You're smiling yeah. as you tell me that. Well, Like, you're I looking knew, back at getting your yeah. nose broken as a degenerate gambler like it was the best. Well, it was the best thing that happened to me. I mean, I'm a, in working with hoarders, you have to believe that you got to hit rock bottom to get back up. And so yeah. that was my rock bottom. So I really, I love that story. I mean, it cracks me up because, I mean, it didn't make sense at the time. Calling your family to ask for money, not a not a fun thing to do. Yeah. But, now I love it because, man, without that rock bottom, I wouldn't have the life I'm having now. I mean, I, I was so low that I had to believe all the shit I was going through was going to pay off sometime later. Did and you believe it at the time? That's I, the hard part. I did. I think I was probably half lying myself and half um, just really focused. And I just I, I really believed I would make a difference at some point. And, you know, I always look back and you know, was I the most focused guy in the world or was I completely delusional? Now, being on TV and having a book, you could say, oh, man, this guy was brilliant. I mean, I would, part of it's luck. A lot of it's timing, like you talked about in that book. Um, There's a lot of timing in your case. Tons. because now Story was your story. Aunt and your grandmother, were they, looking back, were they both hoarders? My grandmother was not. She was just depressed. Her, her husband had died, and she was sad. So with your aunt, you had practiced cleaning someone's house who had a sickness. Yeah, probably 20 times. Of hoarding. Yeah, and not knowing what it was. And with your grandmother, it coincides. In grief. Uh, there's this confluence of you cleaning for a hoarder and then also counseling somebody who's completely depressed exactly. and grief stricken. Yeah, and so, I had, after my dad died, I went into a, a children's grief camp called Comfort Zone Camp. Anybody wants to check it out if you've got a child that's lost a parent. It's a comfort Zone Camp, amazing place. That was, when I got clean from gambling, I just totally just jumped into that world of. Basically, it's a, it's a camp for kids that have lost a parent. You, and I was a counselor. Every weekend, you'd spend three days with them. Every weekend. And that was my new addiction. And so I had two years straight of learning how to counsel young kids that had a loss. And then I'm with my grandma accidentally. She's being nice because I couldn't pay rent. She's paying me 500 bucks to clean her basement. And at the same time, I'm realizing this is kind of like my aunt's house. And she's really sad, like these young kids. And it right. was just a bam. That moment, it was like, wait a minute. It's not the stuff. It's the stories behind the stuff. And I just, instead of yelling at my grandma to get rid of the things, I said, tell me stories about grandpa. And we just started talking about these stories. And so really, I was just visiting and hanging out and talking. And it, it all of a sudden, she let everything go. Because she was telling these great, it was, the, it was the emotion, it was not the physical stuff. Did you see her get happier in your time there? Mm. Totally. She started to smile, she started to laugh, she really enjoyed the cool stories. I mean, for her, that was, she was living again. She had been, she was fully depressed because she wasn't grieving. It's fascinating to me because, again, like, there, there, I mean, there, I guess there are overnight successes, but for you, you're a guy, you graduate from college as an economist, you're going to consult Caesar's Palace, yeah. you go to Vegas, you go to Reno, Tahoe. Tahoe. And you realize. I'd never go to Reno. I'm Worst going to. I'm playing a casino in oh, Reno. I forget the name of it. the country. I'm going to figure out what it is and say it on the air. We'll get people in yeah. there. And, um, but then I just think it's fascinating that where you are now, that you had this odd, I mean, it's a horrible thing to have happened to have an aunt that's a hoarder and you have to keep going back and cleaning and cleaning. And you must've been so confused cleaning your aunt's house the next time. Yeah. The I was, next time. yeah, I could never, cause I really dug her. She was a cool lady and she's really, I mean, BB was her name. Aunt BB loved her. I mean, awesome woman, just hilarious woman. I got a good, kind of tell a good side story about her. Yeah, yeah, hilarious. Is, well, Doug uh, Benson suggested we call yeah. this more digressions. More digressions. So please, someone else going yeah. off track is better. So BB's just like, she's 92 now. She's still with us, still alive. Hi, Aunt BB. She is, um. Throw it away, Aunt BB. She, 
she's actually dying of Alzheimer's, so she she's probably not listening. But should I say it again? Yeah. Say it twenty times. She's not going to hear you. All right. She actually doesn't know how to chew anymore. Her brain has told her she doesn't remember how to I chew. I like that she thinks this is funny. Yeah. Well, I just think it's crazy how the <laughs> brain if works. Laugh, if you don't laugh, yeah, if you, you don't cry. laugh at this, you're not going to laugh at anything. But BB, I'd love her. She forgot how to chew. Her brain doesn't tell her to chew anymore, so they have to they have to actually have to serve her liquids now because her brains just stop working. Why don't they just get mm. a mama bird? That is a phenomenal idea. You're going to revolutionize uh, medicine. Healthcare. Yeah. I'm impressed. Just get big birds, like method. an old crow, to yeah. just sit on your bed. More medicine. I like it. Yeah. We're going to kill it. Hospital food, oh. and you just regurgitate it into the patient's mouth. They don't have to know how to chew. They just stick it all the way down. Oh. You're going to change medicine. I, I would it. like to. Yeah. So, <laughs> Aunt BB. So, BB, old school Southern lady, right? I mean, old school, yeah. which means racist. Yeah. You know? And uh, well, she's, that's just the way and, we talk. I don't know what to tell well, you. Well, she, she's just old school. And my church that we go to, grown up my whole life, fifth generation in this church, and uh, we have a bunch of uh, gay and lesbian members. And she, we knew she couldn't, we just knew she couldn't really understand that all these women that she was friends with were gay. And we said, now, Bibi, you get that she had this, this fabulous couple that she hangs out with. These ladies were out in the 50s, which I think is amazing to be That's publicly badass. as badass. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing women. And we said, now, Bibi, you know that they're not just friends, right? Like she goes, I know they're in love, and we're like, wow, baby's changing. And she goes, as long as they're not black or Jewish, I really don't care. Oh my god! And we we were so you, you know get so high, and then just and she didn't use the word black, by the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And as long you know, the great thing is that right now, Aunt Bibi is she getting is she in a hospital? And I guarantee you, she yeah, has a Dominican a black, yeah. and a black nurse, yeah, absolutely, and, and her best Jewish, friends and a Jewish yeah. doctor. Oh yeah. And Bibi, she didn't mean, I mean, she's not, she's just old school. She's a great loving lady. But anyway, so Bibi taught me pretty much everything I know about cleaning out houses. I mean, she would work with me. And it's ironic that 10 years later, I'm using all the messages that I learned when I was working with her and my grandma. Yeah, you came in at a time, like I'm sure now you can go to like Learning Annex and t- get a class taught by someone like you as to how to deal like the five five decisions. The five. If you go to five decisions away dot com, you yeah. can actually uh, take a class from me in clutter cleaning. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But like you can't. You were the guy. I you built, were the guy. Yeah. You said uh, you figured it out as you went, and then you you. Yeah, I, I wrote mean, it down. That's pretty. My wife. Yeah. Um, obviously you've listened to the podcast. Yeah. You know we're obsessed with Randy Land, and we'll get to <laughs> Sir Patrick, who turned out to be a freaking child yeah. molester. After I talked well yeah. about him, everyone on Twitter goes, really? It shows me nine oh. different mug shots with six different wigs. He had like 50 different identities. Like I crazy should have known stuff. when there was a blow-up doll in the passenger yeah. seat of his Cadillac. I thought he was an actual tunnel rat because he said he was like a tunnel rat in Vietnam. And I thought he probably like slit people's throats with his bare hands. Like let the guy have his stuff. He ended up getting um, – apparently it's a felony to uh, wear medals if you haven't earned them. Yeah. Yeah, and I, like I, I get that. Officers? Yeah, prisoners, and he got he got in a lot of trouble. So was it. he ever in Vietnam? No, never. So everything was a lie. Everything was a lie. His whole life was a lie. And he acted a little gay. Well, yeah. on the show, he came across very effeminate. Feminine. I think that was his character. He he definitely played a. I mean, his whole life was was fake. It wasn't real. He definitely had a role in his mind that he wanted to play. Um, that's one thing I love about hoarders. All we do is just turn the camera on, and we watch. We don't have to. We don't have to make up anything. It's so neat to just see how these people create their life. And for for him, oh, you know, my job on hoarders is to not judge anybody. No, no matter how out there they are, my job is to find the good in that person. Everyone else can get mad at them, but I have to to believe that I can help this person. For someone like I didn't do Sir Patrick's, but I, you know, I did consult on it and got to talk to him. The more you work something like that, you it doesn't matter how crazy they are. You just have to find the good in them. And for him. Um, his whole life was a lie. You just couldn't ever get anything real out of him, ever. He, my wife thinks that the horde, and she told this to you off the air too, is, you'll keep an eye on that, right? Yeah, I'm watching. Okay. My wife, uh, do you want water or anything? I'm good. I'm going to do a Red Bull in a minute. Oh, uh, you got it right there? Yeah. My wife says, like, she's way into the psychological i watch a show for the train wreck like most americans and i'm like and and to me i'm like just throw it all away screw them and we'll get to that yeah. and we'll get to that and my wife thinks uh it's literally hoarding is literally a physical manifestation of the chaos on your insides like cancer but their cancers it fills their homes it doesn't fill their bodies how is that 
Is yep. she right? First off, you always say your wife is brilliant. She's smarter than you. Um, that right there, that ana- that brief analysis is proof. I mean, she breaks it down pretty amazingly there. I didn't even say it that well in my book. I mean, it really is. It's a well, you physical. Know, when you redo the paperback, when they print it again, yeah. you can have it right the we'll forward. Right forward. I like it. And it's it's. I mean, it is a. It's it's. It is probably the only mental disorder out there that you actually visually see what's going on in their mind and their body. Wow. The best I've ever heard, a lady in Hawaii. Aside from this? Yeah. That was, that's good. That Hawaiian that's lady good. pissed me off because... Her husband. She lives in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. You should have seen the view from her house. Once I we, know. The whole once, time I'm watching that Hawaii episode, I'm looking at Nick and I'm going, but they live in Hawaii. Clean once, the house and let us move in. Once we pulled all the... She, we pulled... I mean, it was... A whole day. It took us and the two husband days. Slept in the car. Husband slept in the car. He has old, nice. He's a old real dude. man, real, oh. real guy's guy. He was in All survival right. mode. He just didn't want to bitch with his wife anymore. Yeah, he just he gave up years ago. Good dude. But she said it best to me. She said, "I, it's not that I can't let anything go." She goes, "I need to know where it's going." She goes, "I have a," she goes, "I have a spreadsheet in my head, and I need to check it off." And that was probably the best way I've ever heard it said from a hoarder. And it's just some hoarders spread. It's like an Excel spreadsheet. It's so massive, though. I mean, their their brains are actually they're dead on. They're very smart. They're just full. And but they never check it off. They never check it off. That's the problem. But th- so it's th- the so problem the isn't the spreadsheet. The problem is the following through and the checking it off. The problem is it's like if you're an alcoholic. The problem isn't. Well, I'm trying to do some wacky analogy. The problem isn't that you enjoy the taste of wine. The problem is you can't stop, right? Yeah. But, like, but the, so like these people, do you, would you say that most hoarders see it that way as a spreadsheet? And again, it goes back to a intent. lot. Yeah, a lot of it. I mean, most I'm going to give them, the newspaper boy his bags yeah. back. And most of did, them, but your aunt did. She did one time, and then she just kept holding on but to that it. That one yeah. time, that's 365 yeah. days. Like here you go, buddy. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you look, fucking quarter. What man. is he going to do with them? I know. He probably reused them. But in her mind, she believed. She was doing something better than a tip. So, like, in her mind, it was actually a positive intention. I mean, she really wanted to help the person. <laughs> and most hoarders are that way. Believe I hope not. that kid listens to this yeah. podcast and goes, oh, my God, that was her. That was her. I'm going to track back and down and get the money. It yeah. is the only psychological disease with that you can that you can see yes. outside the body, with the exception of, like, a rash yeah. that you see on the body. Or growth or something. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that's on your body. So that's pretty interesting yeah. that it, it, it's fa- the whole thing is fascinating because it's all mental. It's never no one really wants to do it. I mean, to me, it's just it's an amazing to get in this where I get from when I played poker or did blackjack. I mean, it's always it's reading the person sitting next to you. Like I ha- when I get to a house with a hoarder, I have to totally break them down and read them. So, I mean, beyond deeper than anyone's ever read them, because I have to to basically manipulate the way I communicate with right. them to fit their mind. I can't communicate with them the way I want to communicate. I have to get it to fit how they're going to hear it because each mind works differently. Yeah. So it's kind of the ultimate sales job, really. I have to, in a two-day time period, I have to completely communicate in their way, not now, there's my two, way. There's two different... There's clutter cleaner. Clutter cleaner is my business. And then the trucks that come in... That's 800 got junk. That, to me, has always been yeah. a hang-up. Like, if you want to, are you, you're not in control of that. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's a, they're a mad, they're 350 locations. They're mad. But if you want to help a hoarder, when they look outside and there's 40 trucks in the street and everyone knows that your house and it actually says got junk Junk. to a hoarder, you would think maybe like, hey, do you have a lot of precious stuff? Like maybe (laughs) you could ease in, but just the word junk. On the sides of those trucks, we've always thought to ourselves, ah, there might be yeah. an easier in than yeah. the word got the, those, junk. Yeah, those guys are actually well-trained. Um, Vic, we, we train them quite a bit on the road with them. Um, they're good. The, the name junk does trip us up sometimes for that exact reason. We say, well, my stuff's not junk. Right. It's important. It's and special. the whole neighborhood sees yeah. these trucks. Oh, like, we ladies come on Facebook and tell us, they go, I get nervous when 800 got junk pulls up. Or now they say, like, we go out and we cheer and we clap when 800 got junk drives by. Is hoarding an addiction, or is it a is it a is it a disease? It's a it's a disorder. It's how you're they classify it. And I treat it as an addiction. In my mind, it's really a um, oh, what's the word? Uh, there's an addiction, and then there's a uh, I can't think of the word. But addiction is you actually have a chemical withdrawal, and you right. can't you can't stop. Um, they would sign or you know psychologists would say you don't have a chemical withdrawal from acquiring. But these people seem to really have yeah. a huge Chemical oh yeah. Control. They, they if you want to technically know, no, they don't. But mentally, they do. I mean, they're stuck. I mean, it ruins their whole lives. They choose stuff over their kids. 
when the, you have to get deeper and deeper and understand the why. That's the real key is why do they act this way? Nobody wakes up and wants to be a hoarder. Something tragic has happened to them. Even a Sir Patrick or a Randy Land, something tragic happened what deep happened in their life. What happened to Randy? Though? Because we, that was never on the show. No, a lot. I mean, Randy Land could have been edited any different. You know, it's, people don't realize you, you film.